Hey guys, it's your humble host, or if you prefer, so I'm back with another video. I had tweeted out a few days ago that I was going to cover this article, so here we are. And then I want to show you something really interesting, because I had talked about in my tweet how I shun the Me Too movement, and how they treat male survivors slash victims. So we're going to go through that after this article. So this is from Yahoo Life. Um, the number of male domestic abuse victims is shockingly high, so why don't we hear about them? When you think of a victim of domestic abuse who comes to mind, if you're being honest, it's probably a woman. After all, domestic violence against men isn't a theme of many Hollywood movies. Well, and not, it may not be a theme of Hollywood movies, but like for me, from my experience with my family history and things like that, when it came to abuse or domestic violence, I never saw it being mainly just women, considering what has happened in my family, and I won't go into it because it's inappropriate and not just my business, um, and be wrong to tell other people's stories without them knowing. Anyway, though, so for me, it's either or. Um, yet in 2010, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released data from its National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, and one of the most shocking statistics wasn't just the sheer total of victims of physical violence, but also how these numbers broke down by gender. Let me also point out that I actually know, I wonder if the theme is a little bit more prevalent in books. Like, I'll give you an example. For anyone who's familiar with the Legend of Drizzt series, there's a character in there called Artemis, and I forget which book it's in. My husband reads the series, so I hear all about it. I'm familiar with uh, quite a bit of the characters. But Artemis' backstory, he was raped as a child. So, and there was another book that my sisters brought up. I can't, for the life of me, remember what it was, um, where there was a dude in there um, that had also suffered the same fate and he turned into a monster because of it, something along those lines. But I wonder if that is more prevalent in books than it is in actual Hollywood movies. I don't know. Let's carry on. Um, according to the CDC statistics, estimates based on more than 18,000 telephone survey responses in the United States, roughly 5,365 100,000 men had been victims of intimate partner physical violence in the previous 12 months compared with 407,041,000 ,000 women. By the study's definition, physical violence includes slapping, pushing, and shoving. More severe threats like being beaten, burned, choked, kicked, slammed with a heavy object, or hit with a fist were also tracked. Roughly 40% of these victims of severe physical violence were men. The CDC repeated the survey in 2011, the results of which were published in 2014, and found almost identical numbers with the percentage of male severe physical violence victims slightly rising. Now, let me tell you something, too, because, again, um, it's not my place of people's stories, but one of the men in my family actually suffered physical violence at the hands of a woman. Won't go into it, but it was pretty bad. So there, it, it does happen, and the fact there's such a stigmatization of it just being women, I think is garbage. And it's so taboo to come out and say they were abused. Mm, that needs to change. Um, anyway, reports are also showing a decline of the number of women and increase in the number of men reporting abuse, says counselor and psychologist Carla Ivankovic, PhD, and adjunct professor of psychology at the University of Illinois Springfield. Hey, that's a hour and a half from me. Interesting. Um, but no, that is true. As more and more stories come out of female predators, female pedophiles, men are reporting more and more. And I just, it, it's a weird twist. I'm not saying yay, which I think. I think it's horrifying the way that things are going. Um, it shows just how, I want to say, devolved and ignorant and arrogant society is about abuse overall and who can be abused. 
Um, newsflash people, abuse, whether it's sexual, physical, mental, verbal, psychological, is not gender specific, aka sex specific. It's not just men, it's not just women, it's both. At the hands of both. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, Avai Kambanch says there isn't much buzz about these numbers or their implications because we don't know how to handle intimate partner violence against men. Society supports that men should not hit women by virtue. I'm under the impression that if you're a woman and you have balls enough to go after a man with a knife, any type of weapon, you need to be put on your ass and depending on the situation, you need to be treated as an equal and possibly put in the dirt. I'm sorry. Like I said, from my own experience, I don't see male victims slash survivors different from female victims slash survivors. I just don't. Because of my own family history, the way that I grew up, the men in my family that were abused, I didn't see them any different from me. I really didn't. I actually had a lot more respect for them because of their growth as a human being, the way that they picked themselves up despite their difficulties and some of the struggles that came about from the abuse. Um, but yeah, I had more respect for them because they, were, they picked themselves up. And I was just like, well, I can actually, you know, look up to you. But yeah, I never saw them as any different. I really didn't. Um, now, I will say abuse does affect men and women differently because men, um, by default, generally speaking, are heads of the house and the protectors. Um, they're formatted a bit differently. And then women also respond to abuse in a completely different way than men do. But they still get abused. Both of them do. Both of them need to get cared for. Um, they each have uh, different side effects, special needs after being abused and we, we need to start doing that. I'm so sick of this shit. Um, I, let's see. Let's see. But at the same time, it's not true. For the reverse, she explains, the fact is it's simply not acceptable to hit anyone. And I agree. There is no need for physical violence. Now, I do believe in self-defense. I'm obviously a pro-Second Amendment person. But, and then if you really want to go into like the sports of uh, mixed martial arts, that's something completely different. We're not even going to do that. But you guys get what I'm saying. I am myself and not a violent person. I don't like violence. Um, I used to rough house and tumble as a kid, but that, again, that's something different. There's a difference between fighting as a sport, say, like martial arts or boxing or wrestling, that than just beating on someone because you're trying to exercise power or control over them. Um, yet women on man violence is often turned into on-screen amusement. That is actually true. And growing up, like a lot of the movies, I did see that in a lot of the movies to where the women would um, scream at the guy getting his face. And he did sometimes, a lot of the reactions that was drawn, because a lot of this was animated, um, where you see like he'd get like ashamed, he'd get angry. So, no, there was a lot of that. We were, this is part of where the media comes in and that stigmatizes, oh, men can't be victims. Oh, it's funny when they get hit. So, that has been a thing and it's still a thing. Um, like on a slew of reality shows, which I don't watch reality TV. I think it's all garbage, but it was prevalent in cartoons. It was prevalent in kid movies. It's prevalent all over the place. Um, like, I'll give you an example. I will give you a perfect example. Kim Possible. Okay, so you guys remember the villains of Kim Possible? You had Shigo and Draken. These were Kim Possible's and Unstoppable's main two villains. Shigo is abusive as hell. Now, I like Shigo as a character and a villain, and she does um, get a little arc of her own and character development and a little bit of redemption. But she is physically verbal. And when she gets a hold of a very special item, she is psychologically abusive. So that is a perfect thing. And growing up, I did laugh at Shigo um, terrorizing Dragon. As he talk all this crap and she just throw a plasma ball, whatever her little powers are called, and be seen running. Again, though, looking back at that, though, that trope, if you will, was seen in a lot of different cartoons. And we as children thought it was funny because we didn't know any better. So when we grew up in real life, now granted, like I said, because of my experience, because some stuff I know about some of the men in my family, I didn't really, I just equated it to the cartoon. And I'm not saying everybody's going to see a cartoon like that and go, oh, hey, this is real life. I'm not saying that. What I am saying, though, there is a general sense of what we see on TV and then think it's a portrayal of real life. 
So that is the problem. That is what she's talking about here. Um, if you hear laughing in the background, I do apologize. It's my husband. Um, he has a really loud laugh. Anyway, um, or the punchline of a larger depressing narrative, says Ann P. Mitchell, a retired professor of family law at Lincoln Law School in San Jose, California, and one of the first father's rights lawyers in the country. That is awesome. Um, it has like a little picture here. I just broke up with my emotionally abusive girlfriend today. Yes, I am a guy, and yes, abuse can go both ways. Yes, it can. Um, she points to the case of John and Lorena Bobbitt, which made national news more than 20 years ago when Lorena cut off her husband's penis. The aftermath turned into a circus, and details would go on to reveal a volatile marriage, but Mitchell says the initial response of many radio and talk shows was just to laugh at the incident. If something remotely similar had happened to a woman, there would have been a very different response. Mitchell tells Yahoo Health. Also, let me bring that up, too, because this can actually, and I know this is a little bit of a different door, but we do treat men and women differently. Now, I understand, yes, men are, his, generally speaking, the stronger sex. They are the protectors. And it, I respect that. I have no disrespect. Um, but I will say with what comes with that, there needs to be more of a balance. Let me explain. I'll give you an example. Let's bring up circumcision. Okay, so there is female circumcision. And then there's male circumcision. Females, when they cut out the clitoris. Many cultures do this. Africa. Uh, the Middle East, so on. So this is a thing. Now, we find that barbaric, repulsive, disgusting. However, though, when you bring up male circumcision, and there's more of a movement now, because I've gone and read, at first I had no idea. I didn't think anything of it until it started to become more prevalent a few years ago, and I actually read into it, and was rather freaking um, horrified by the procedure. But we just, that's just an example. We treat those two differently. So am I saying that we need to treat men and women the same all the time? No, because they are different. But at the same time, there needs to be a balance here. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Okay, here we go. Um, Mitchell, who has legally represented numerous male victims of domestic violence, says abuse is typically difficult for men to process. Yes, because they are, and again, this is a balance too with the way that men are raised, because and I'm going to be, listen to me, listen very carefully to me. There is, and I'm not using the feminist definition, I'm talking about um, there are certain cultures and certain things, the way that men are raised, where they're not supposed to feel any emotion at all. Now, was that how the men in my family were raised? I can't speak much of it, but I do know, like, for example, my father. He was a very emotional guy. I'm not talking about unstable, but when he was upset, you saw it when he was, he needed to cry, he cried. So do I see him as any wheat? No, I don't. Um, but that's just an example because there is a such thing as toxic masculinity. But listen to me before you guys freak out on me. The way that feminists use it nowadays is garbage. But there is an actual toxic masculinity and that deals with um, not being cry at all, not being seen as weak, um, like at all, not um, struggling. If you struggle, you're weak. And struggling could be with an addiction, it could be with your own self-image, insecurity. I'm not a guy, so I can't speak 100% to these things. Um, I'll give you a better example. For those of you who have been on my channel for a while, you know I have an analogy about marriage that I felt God gave me. A, a sword. So... And I've had this discussion with my dad about how men struggle or when it comes to marriage, many wives see their husbands who are struggling as weak or whatnot, or that seems to be the uh, impression given. So we were kind of talking about that. And if you think about how a sword, eventually that sword is going to break down. It's going to crack. It's going to become brittle. It's going to weaken because it has to deal with so much and it's not allowed to be cared for. You have to care for a sword. You have to clean it off. You have to make it stronger. It has to go through possibly a melting process again or makes it really vulnerable. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. Men are the same way. So when I say that there is a such thing as toxic masculinity, this toxic masculinity teaches men that they can't be vulnerable at all. They can't struggle at all. That's different from what the feminists are saying because the feminists are legit going after masculinity. I'm not using the feminist definition. Hopefully you guys can see the difference exactly with what I'm saying because I, I'm not agreeing with the feminist. The way that they're using the term is garbage 
and they are legit trying to emasculate men. No, we're not talking about that here. Um, hopefully you guys get the difference. Um, let's see. Um, because I keep losing my place. I'm sorry. <laughs> Men are brought to believe it's not okay to hit a woman or even hit back in self-defense, which I think is garbage. I really freaking do. Um, she explains, it is their job to protect her, which that is the case, but also at the same time, you attack your husbands with a weapon, you deserve to be eating the carpet. Now, there is such thing as restraint, and a guy who knows what they're doing will do his best to restrain the woman, but... There comes a time where it calls for more, and there's a balance even with that. So, I don't know what the balance is, but yeah. Um, it is their job to protect her. Add in that you'd be a laughing stock if you said your woman hit you. So, in the situation of the battered husband, they don't know how to feel. Again, this goes back to what I just brought the actual real toxic masculinity of men being not allowed to struggle, being not allowed to be vulnerable in the way like, hey... I'm getting hurt. I'm getting messed with. This is not okay. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, so in the situation of the battered husband, that they don't know how to feel. They know it's shameful, which it shouldn't be. Again, abuse is abuse. It should not be freaking gender specific. It should not be, oh, well, women just get abused and men don't. I, I, I'm so, this was not the way I was raised. Um, they do not want her to get in trouble, so they do not say anything. Um, and that happens, too. What abuse of men looks like. How much time are we? 16 minutes. This is going to be a long one. Uh, physical violence carried out against men is often similar to physical violence against women. Like Avant says, though it can differ, abusive women have been known to abuse in ways similar to men, including punching, kicking, biting, and spitting. She says, in some instances, to make up for the differences in physical strength, women might use weapons including butts, guns, or knives. Sometimes, many times... Women on man abuse has nothing to do with throwing punches or weapons, rather it's emotional. In addition to physical abuse, women also engage in psychological abuse. That is very much true, Ike Avant sheds, or Sumi adds. This controlling mechanism can include humiliation, intimidation, and belittling words or statement. So, and I'm sure fellas, you guys can attest to us, when your woman really starts to, and I'm not talking about nagging because that's, that's the normal stereotype of wives we nag that's what we do but when it goes beyond nagging to where you are criticized for every little thing you do you one little hair out of place and all hell broke loose um so that is what they're talking about saying oh well you're never going to be this way or you can never do this you're just worthless to me well you, you fellas know what i'm talking about um I broke up with my emotionally abusive girlfriend and still feel like dirt because of the things she vents to me about. I'm trapped even when I'm not. So, um, there's another psychological tactic used against men. No one will believe you, which I think is bullshit. Honestly, for me, again, I didn't grow up that way because of who I'm attached to and because of what they did. So, yeah. Um, men fear the possibility that others will think they are lying or that they are actually the ones, uh, perpetrating the abuse, as Agba just says. Excuse me, that name is a little difficult for me. Going through a divorce because of a mentally and emotionally abusive wife who felt the need to cheat. I'm 28 years old and feel like I can't be loved again because of the doubt she instilled. That has happened. Um, I actually heard a story about, and this, I want to say a great grandma of mine, because I kept hearing stories about her because my looks would be compared to her. Um, not in a bad way, mind you. But anyway, the story goes how my great-grandmother was just, like, really, really hostile. Um, and, um, any time that her and her husband fought, like, there was one specific story I was told how her husband wanted to take everyone out, like, for dinner or something. I don't quite remember what it was. And she had started some shit over something so small and the fight escalated so big and she got so freaking mean because I actually got told by several relatives this grandmother was me. I never met I never met the woman. Um but she got so mean and during this one situation where it got so bad because they were driving when this fight broke out, he turned around and went home. So and I heard it from my relatives that this is what happened a lot because she was just to get so 
hostile. Um, just one example. Uh, Mitchell says that based on old stereotypes and typical gender roles, it is often very difficult for men to get fair treatment. That is true. And uh, I will show you exactly what I mean. Because like I, s I believe I mentioned this before, I found my Facebook post the very first time I post about Me Too. Um, they're often stuck in situations in which they cannot win. Many women who are aggressive towards their partners know that if the police are called out, they will arrest the man. That is true, too. She explains, I had one, I once had a client who was the mildest guy ever. In no way would he ever had been violent, but his girlfriend was very volatile and a drug user. Once she was trying to provoke him to hit her when he wouldn't respond, she raked her fingernails across his face. He was standing there bleeding when the police arrived at the house. They still arrested him. And I actually have a similar story. Again, I'm not going to name who these relatives are, but it was a younger woman and a man. Um, and I had heard about it um, after the fact that it happened. But anyway, so as the story goes, is this young woman and man were fighting on the porch. A very big age difference, and this young woman had a very nasty temper or whatnot. Again, relatives of mine, we're not going to name them or specify. And it got to the point where she had picked up a sprinkler and smacked him with it, and he went to go walk, and it completely busted the sprinkler on his arm. Of course, some idiot from across the street saw this, called the cops, and my male relative was arrested. So... I had, yeah, yeah, it, it does happen. It happens more often than you think. Um, according to Ruth Glenn, um, executive director of the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the reason for the abuse is the same for men and women. It's all about maintaining power and control over a partner, she tells Yahoo Health. And because we still live in a patriarchal society, and when it is domestic violence, you are looked at as the weaker when you are the victim. So let me touch upon the patriarchal just a bit, because again, feminist term, no. The way that they see patriarchy is how dare men be in charge at all. They have their chance to temper women to rise up. No, that's fucking stupid. Anyway, their traditional patriarchal society, like the actual patriarchy, is where men, again, as I said, they can't be weak, they can't struggle, they can't be vulnerable at all. Is that such a thing nowadays? Yes and no, in a lot of ways, no, obviously not, um, because of what's been going on with the Me Too movement and the fact that we're seeing more and more female predators and the fact that we see more, anytime a woman screams rape, the man that gets accuses of the accusation, all hell breaks loose and he's like canceled, he's demonized without any regards for actual evidence. Um, we actually saw this in the uh, gamer community, I'm not a gamer, well, there's a situation between someone called the Burning Witch and, uh, yeah, for those of you who recognize that name, and uh, the co-creators of, uh, what is that little animal game? Uh, Night in the Woods, I believe it's called, um, where Burning Witch accused the co-creator of doing something uh, sexually volatile um, or hostile, was either rape or something, and... There was such a backlash against the co-creator. No evidence, mind you. No freaking evidence, mind you. He committed suicide within a few days because he got cut from the program. He got cut from the game. Dude, it was nasty. So stuff like that drives men to suicide. And that's just an example. That's an example. And instead of it becoming more patriarch, it's becoming more matriarch. Um, so, and that, that is the truth. Now, we're still seeing the remnants of the old patriarch ways. Again, I'm not talking about the feminist garbage. I'm really not. For those of you guys who grew up uh, 1970s, 80s, 60s, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Because I do know I have a bit of an older audience on here. I have very few kids on uh, that come and watch. Uh, well, actually, let me be careful. Uh, teenagers. Young teens, very young adults. I don't ever touch to kids. Sorry, specifying because YouTube's bots are stupid. Anyway, let's continue on. Uh, according to Ruth Glenn, executive director of the National... Did I already read this? Oh, yep, I already did. Um, and because we still... Oh, yep, I already read that too. My wife is really sweet sometimes, but mostly she's emotionally abusive. I feel like it's all my fault that I get treated this way. 
So that is the case too where the guy feels like because nobody is coming in, nobody's actually seeing what's wrong and because he's not being told any different, again, there is a certain programming that goes into the way that a lot of men are raised. Um, so he's, he wasn't taught, and I'm not talking about this is true for all men, but he wasn't taught, hey, um, protect yourself. Hey, you're not supposed to be messed with either. Hey, if this is happening to you, you need to reach out. Not taught that. A lot of men are not taught that. Now there are, it's gotten better to where we are reaching out. And again, I'm not talking about the emasculation of men because no, that's again, something different for those of you who have been around, as I said, in the earlier decades, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Glenn says we don't have nearly the data on the actual prevalence of domestic violence against men that we do against women. And that's true because we've ignored men for so freaking long and made fun of them when they got their, um, shit kicked in. And I'm sorry, that's a horrible way to put that, but that is the bluntest of ways to put that by their wives or girlfriends because we thought it was funny. We were programmed that way. Now there is such a turnabout. It's like, no, we need to stop doing this garbage and actually address both. Again, I I have many victims slash survivors from me, past victims in my family. I never thought one from the other. So, um, let's see. He says the abuse is more often emotional and psychological. Uh, male and female perpetrators of abuse display higher than average rates of borderline and narcissistic personality disorders, which are high in that need to control. Inkovich adds, men are less likely to seek assistance for this type of abuse because of the shame and stigma. Staying for the children. There are many reasons. Let me see what time we're at. Ooh, yeah, long video. Um, there are many reasons men stay or do not quietly slip away from the abusive partners, many of which are the same reasons women stay in these kinds of relationships. Um, they stay out of shame, out of fear, out of love, and not just love for their significant other, but for their children. According to Mitchell, many men stay in abusive relationships for the sake of their kids and the main ways in which split might affect a child's well-being. Uh, which comes to mind, custody battles, which are nasty. Family court is horrid. Anyway, in a divorce, many women are highly empowered through the court process. Yes, they are. He says, the idea is that it's better to have a happy parent than two unhappy parents. And when it comes down to it, the father is not that necessary, which is a bunch of bullshit. Because I am under the belief, again, just from my own experience and from what we've seen of society, uh, a healthy child needs a mother and father. And the relationship, when we specify two, because this has come up in my streams, um, the child needs a healthy relationship with the mother and father. And the mother and father need to have a healthy relationship with each other. Now, how that looks can differentiate based on family, but there's always basis. Um, there really is. And that is healthy nuclear family. A child needs a nuclear family and the relationships of that nuclear family need to be healthy. Got it? Good. Because I, I remember it was a stream that I had and was brought up, oh, well, just because our nuclear family does not make them healthy. Never said that. Sorry, I have this horrible itch on my nose. Um, I've endured eight years of emotional abuse from my wife, a Steve for my daughter who deserves one decent parent. Judge rarely grants custody to fathers. That is actually true as well. Um, and it seems that the court system is against fathers we see this with uh jeffrey younger of save james um we see this with chris clay um which i have yet to hear anything of that supreme court ruling because it's going to be a little bit um but the fact that the lower courts allow a stranger to come in and get some rights to his daughter i think is disgusting it was the ex fiance of his uh deceased ex-lover which is Anne's mom so but yeah a lot of times family courts will not give custody to the dad um I can relate with my own story with that as well um my father has told me that the judge that handled my case rather was a very man-hating judge so yeah it is a thing we've seen more and more evidence of this so it's very, very horrifying. 
Um, Mitchell says she's had male clients who try to keep their relationships together to maintain that bond with their children or even to shield their kids from the volatile partner who stay to protect them, she says. They don't want mom to end up in trouble or the kids to even realize what's going on. And I will say a lot of the time, um, kids do pick up on stuff um, because they feel that mommy and daddy aren't getting along and there's something different, there's something off. I do apologize, probably. Um, I honestly don't know if I should fight for my marriage anymore. I never wanted to quit, but I just don't know how much more of her emotional abuse I can take. I wanted my boys to have a whole home. The situation is always sticky and never easy, stay or leave. Similar to abused wives, even the demise of the marriage, it can be difficult for a male to escape a toxic partner. Mitchell, excuse me, Mitchell points to one of her past remarried male clients who was punched in the face by his ex-wife over a poor card from their middle school age child. Yikes. It's also tough for fathers to remain involved in kids' day-to-day happenings from football games to school plays and continually reinforce to their children they love them when they're not always there. Mitchell mentions yet another man who finally ended his marriage as abuse escalated. This man's ex-wife was very angry, manipulative, and tried to cut him out of the kids' lives. Of course she did. Um, eventually, he moved to California to New Jersey to cut ties and start over, but he also moved heaven and earth to continue to be a father to his children, despite any parent bad-mouthing that had been going on when he was not there. My advice was always to keep trying, Mitchell says. Kids have a funny way of growing up and seeing the reality. Dad was there. Um, and I will say, I will attest to this now, and I've talked about how on here just a little bit, I've continued at it in my poetry, how I was abused by my biological mom. Um, I don't know how many times um, that woman tried to badmouth my new mom and my dad to me, especially my dad, trying to say that he was hiding us from her, um, which was never the case, by the way. So uh, my dad actually made it a point a few times to go and look for her because he wanted us to have a relationship with her, granted um or despite what hell she put him through so yeah that is a thing um shifting our culture perspective on abuse glenn says if she could clear up one misconception about abuse it's that it's a private problem just looking at the statistics victims lose eight million days of paid work per year and many lose their jobs some estimates also indicate the total cost of intimate partner violence exceeds 800 billion annually, says Glenn. It's important to stay vigilant to unexplained behavioral changes in coworkers, friends, and family members who might be in trouble. A large myth surrounding domestic violence is that it is a family matter, which I think is garbage because if you know someone is getting abused and you're well aware of the situation and you can do something and you don't, you're you're garbage. Sorry, you're just you're garbage. Um, it's not. Until we stand up and say it's not, though, we will continue to be a society who doesn't address the issue nearly enough. Thank you. Or properly um, how to educate people. Let me throw that in there. That I'll bring that up again here in a few. Um, and must also keep in mind that there's no gender immunity to violence and psychological excuse me, manipulation. Uh, gender roles are at the crux of this issue, Ekevent says. We still view women as a, uh, nurturers and caregivers and men as a providers and protectors. Because they are, generally speaking, and that does need to stay in place, but with balance, okay? So that does need to stay in place. Women are mothers, and they are the ones that give birth, but that there needs to be more of a balance to that. But that does not need to go away. That's actually what's causing our society to devolve because there's such a backlash against the nuclear family and what it stands for and the roles of it. So that doesn't need to go away. That needs to actually be protected, cared for, and properly examined. Make sure with the proper balances, checks and balances in place. That does not need to go away. Um, To consider that a woman may take on a role as an abuser threatens what we as a society know about gender rural assignment. And it's not, okay, let me touch upon this because it sounds like this has some like feminine stuff in it uh, or feminine talking points, feminist talking points. Um... It's not that it's gender role assignment. Let's just look at the physical difference between men and women. Men have more mass. They can put on more mass. They can hold more muscle because their skeleton structure is different. Um, Women are more fragile just because of the reproductive system. Um, As a result, many men are told to suck it up or face further shaming by identifying the severity of the problem. 
My ex-girlfriend was physically and mentally abusive whenever I told someone they told me to man up and get over it. I never felt so alone. Resources for abused men are scarce and it's often problematic for them to report domestic abuse. Authorities and others may assign the abuse to them and perhaps they would lose their children. Perhaps they would be stigmatized. Um, I'm a guy on the receiving end of a verbally and emotionally abusive marriage. I don't know where to get help. Um, the culture of abuse needs a full shift in perspective. Domestic violence and emotional abuse against men is a huge problem, one that needs to be addressed with greater access to resources than what is currently available. Um, I can mention as abuse is abuse. There is no point in which it is okay, especially to condone it for one sex and crucify the other, which is double standards. Anyone who is abused should be able to get help and should be able to do so in an environment that is not shameful or accusatory. Um, we need to encourage abused men to get help as well, according to Glenn. The signs of abuse in men are usually the same as women. Look for behavior changes, isolation. They suddenly disappear from their social circle. They're not willing to talk about it, she explains. Often there's a lot of controlling behavior by the partner. Money is often withheld or they're told to constantly check in. That is true. I'm sorry. I have a... My new cat's very squeaky. Um, I am in a emotionally abusive relationship. I've been trying to break things off with my girlfriend for a long time, but I'm scared of hurting her, even though she's hurt me every day. That is part of it, too. Um, women absolutely experience domestic violence, too, including sexual violence and stalking at higher rates than men, which is something... Well, actually, let me disagree with that there, um, because that's often the betrayal. But um, just for example, we probably see a lot more rates skyrocket um, if we actually open domestic violence shelters for men exclusively. We don't have anything like that here in the States, to my knowledge. Um, I do know that's something that some people have been fighting for for a very long time, but we don't have that here. Not that I know of, and if you guys know of a few shelters, please put them in the uh, comments section below, um, which is something that should never be downplayed. A victim is a victim. No abuse should be tolerated. The total abuse on both men and women is enormous. The stats are only whispered, but the estimates are alarming. 20 people are abused by an intimate partner every minute. Um, chances are you are one, and they say 10 million per year. Um, so let me show you something real quick before any more distractions come around. Sorry, like I said, long video. Okay, so I had posted this um, October 17th, 2017. Me too. Men have both been affected too. Men do get sexually abused as well by women. I have. We're here for you too, fellas. So when the Me Too movement was created, it was based off the Hollywood incident with uh, Harvey Weinstein. And it was only thought to be just for women. So when I first heard about it, I thought it was a way for like all past victims, survivors, you know, to get together, bounce information, how to properly cope with past traumatic events and, you know, pass on information. I thought that's what I was about. So I didn't associate it for a very long time until I posted this and I learned to shun it for life. So as you can see, there is some angry people in my comment section. Anna Goheny. Um, and here's, 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 let's just go through the comments. Um, and this is on my public graphic page, so no, I will not be blocking anything out. Go away. Um, I have a feeling you don't understand what the I have hashtag actually means. I do, and men are not the only ones to solely blame. Women do that crap, too. And that is a whole other jar of worms as to why there's more of a prevalence, and we can go into the sexual manipulation, and all that other bullshit that came around in the 1970s. And, you know, there's a rise of now female predators. It, it just, it's all connected. We'd be here, like, forever going into it and dissecting it. Anyway, let's continue. Um, direct quote from Laura B. Sharp. Not exactly what sure that means. I must have edited it or something. Um, that's ridiculous. Feminists really don't want to help both genders or themselves. Um, never heard of this Laura, and probably for the exact same reason her line of thinking being like that. Um, equates to female superiority at the expense of men's masculinity. Uh, no, it doesn't. Case in point, Roger Allies. <laughs> I forgot they threw in Donald Trump. Holy crap. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is before the Vic Maniano stuff and before I made that list. Uh, that's uh, the false accusations. Um, there are so many 4 chan -er buzzwords and your so-called definition of feminism that just asserts that none of you know what you're talking about. 
So I had a little like angry feminist jump on this. Um, some were following me and that left me after this post, which I really don't care. Go away because if that's how you feel, screw off. I have no need for you. Um, actually, I need to show you something else too. Hold on. Because yeah, this is just an example. So let me, this has to do with uh, me too as well. Hold on. We're going to do this live. Because I found this um, also on someone else's page. Um, I want to say this came from the Honey Badgers um, or a reposting of the Honey Badgers. Um, okay, so this is when men are seen as weak for coming out about their abuse. Let, let, let's look at this. Let's, let's read this crap because um, this post is no longer um, there because she rightfully got trashed. And it got removed. So, again, do apologize about the nose scratching. I have horrid allergies. Um, am I, this is a thread. Am I the asshole for distancing myself from my boyfriend after he admitted he was raped? Let's see. 40 minutes. Holy cow. I'm a 20-year-old woman currently dating my 24-year-old boyfriend of five months. He's tall, muscular, blonde with blue eyes. He's also t really dominant and works at a startup doing marketing. In general, he's very smart, funny, yada, yada. You get it. I like him. However, even though our sex life is good, he's been having trouble performing starting a week and a half ago. So, let me stop you right there, um, because that's when the abuse started to come up. That's when his brain went, flick, remember what happened to you? Yeah, so anybody who's, uh, and I, I'll put this in the description below too, because this was also brought up in this book. It's a Christian, uh, done by a Christian author who is also a sexual abuse counselor as he was a uh, past victim slash survivor himself. He brings up how, and a lot of the times relationships, the sex can be good between marriage, but when abuse starts to creep back up and memories, it can screw up the entire thing. So, ta-da! Um, I thought it was me at first. So I asked him, I started to break down a bit before crying. His memories came back up. His memories were freaking triggered. And I'm not, again, I know that's turned into an SJW buzzword, but hear what I'm saying. What, I guess their intimacy was bringing up memories, which is rather horrifying when you actually start re-remembering some of this shit. Um, he started seeing a therapist or counselor about his childhood, which good on him. Um, he then tells me that he was raped as an 11-year-old by his stepbrother multiple times when he was young. Uh, this for me, as up until this point, he seemed so macho and sort of like a tough guy, and now he's confessing to being raped by another man while completely being in tears and holding me. Um, okay, so let me just, you know, educate some people that I, I may get nasty comments. Okay, so when you have someone... Okay, so sexual abuse is very traumatic. Any type of abuse is very traumatic. It breaks you down as a person, depending on how severe it was, whether it be physical, sexual, whatever. It literally tears your inside out. Sexual abuse tears out your humanity. But it's a black spot and you are pretty much broken, disgusting goods. That is how you feel, okay? So when you have people who can pick themselves off the floor and continue to go about life in a mostly normal way, and they have a successful career, successful life, however they define success in a healthy way, that is awesome. That is a very strong pressure. Now, let me also point something out, too, because this is also in uh, that Christian counselor I brought up, Dr. Dan Allender's book, where he talks about how the mind will create a shield when the tra trauma happens to create a shield to protect the brain from going insane. So when you have someone who suddenly starts remembering stuff and they seem like a uh, they had a normal childhood, um, that they're normal, and I'm not trying to, like, degrade anything, um, because, again, I am a past survivor aspect of myself, so when I say normal, meaning that there was no trauma, you're acting like you weren't traumatized growing up, that is amazing, because of what the mind can do. Now, for some reason, his memory start started to float back up, his brain started to let down that shield, um, and it has happened to a lot of people when they get older, those memories come back. I don't know how to possibly extend because there's some stuff that I've either kind of remembered through dreams. and it, It's weird. There's a such thing as memory suppression, especially when it comes to uh, trauma victims. And that is the brain protecting itself from going nuts. Um, let's see. 
I am held back and let him vent, but I ended up leaving. We were at his apartment, which you are a shit human being for doing so. I completely understand that it's horrible being a rape victim, but honestly, I don't know if I could see him in the same way again. And I will say, let me touch upon this. Let me touch upon this because in the reality, because this was also brought up in that book too, how it is embarrassing. It is disgusting. You're bringing up something about yourself and how that person reacts. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that people are going to react the best way or they, they don't know how to handle the story because it's so horrid. Now, her reaction is, I can understand if it was a bit of a shell shock, but what she does after and what she considers after is kind of garbage. But it is shocking to hear. Every time I see him text me, I just feel weird now. Which, there is a mental shock. So I'm not degrading her for being mentally shocked because what she just heard was absolutely horrid. It's it's dark. It's so depressing. Um, my best friend thinks I should try to keep dating him for a bit, but I'm not really attracted to him like I was before. We're not broken up yet, but I'm considering it kind of, am I the asshole? Yes, you are. So when you get to a point in your relationship where he feels comfortable enough to share his dark secrets with you, and there is there's a proper balance to do, uh, to do that and when to do that, but at the same time, ladies, when your men share with you some of their most vulnerable parts of themselves, and I, I can speak for me too, sometimes it is uncomfortable, sometimes it is shocking, but... You have to learn how to respond appropriately, and yes, it's going to jar your image of him in your head. Yes, it's going to jar how you perceive him. It's going to shake a lot of things, but when they get that vulnerable with you, don't freaking, don't do this shit. Don't do this freaking garbage, and like I said, I found this post, oh, sorry, the viewing's a little off. But I found this post, and this is another reason why, excuse my language, fuck the Me Too movement. Fuck it. So this is another reason why I shun it, because you have women who, this, this is traditional patriarchy right here. Right here. And it's not always portrayed by men, because it's sometimes, a lot of the time, portrayed by freaking women. Oh, well, I'm doing this to you, but you should just, you know, shut up and take it like a man. That is traditional patriarchy. Like I said, there's a difference between a man struggling um, versus um, a man just being a douche. There really is. But that, this is an example of traditional patriarchy right fucking here. So, but anyway, this has carried on for a while, but I really felt like I wanted to cover this because this has come up multiple times. So anyway, hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. Tell me your thoughts below. And if you actually know of any um, male domestic violence shelters here in the U.S., do let me know and I will pin them in the comment section. Because as far as I know, there isn't any. We have shelters for women. I have yet to hear about one shelter for men. Um, and where was it? Was it in the UK, Canada? Somebody tried to get a shelter open exclusively for men and it was shut down. And I can't remember, there's three countries, either UK, US, or Canada. If you guys know what I'm talking about, post that in the comment section as well. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.